This bill's a cop-out. It's a capitulation to the property lobby and a slap in the face for the 1.8 million renters in Queensland. It's a reminder that if you have the backing of wealthy property investors and money for a full-page ad in the Courier-Mail, then you'll have the ear of the minister. But if you can't afford your own home, then you're ignored and treated like a second-class citizen. Years ago, when Labor finally gave in and said they'd reform our broken rental laws, it felt like a step forward. I had renters emailing me and asking when the reforms would come into effect, when they'd be able to put down roots in their home, keep a pet, live without fear of massive rent hikes or request repairs without fear of being kicked out when their lease ends. But perhaps we should have known those changes would never come. They could never come from a government packed with landlords and with more interested in housing, hosting intimate luncheons with the REIQ than helping renters. On introduction, it was immediately clear that this bill was a disappointment, and the bitter disappointment expressed by tenants and tenants' rights advocates alike speaks volume about just how far short it falls. Perhaps the most egregious flaw is the government's backing down on their commitment to end no-ground evictions after a well-funded fear campaign by the property lobby. The minister falsely claims, again, that this bill ends no-ground evictions. Pretty much anyone who has worked with tenants disagrees. Tenants Queensland, uh, QDN, Queensland Disability Network, Q Shelter, Queensland Youth Housing Coalition, Law Right, the Queensland Human Rights Commission all agree that this is just plain wrong and that this bill does not end no-grounds evictions. The Greens have always said that there are some perfectly reasonable grounds on which an owner should be able to evict a tenant. To be clear, if a tenant's not paying their rent, they can be evicted. If a tenant's trashed the place, they can be evicted. If they're otherwise breaching the lease, they can be evicted. But the end of a lease is not a good reason to kick someone out of their home, especially when most leases are for just six or 12 months. I'm perplexed to see the minister is still claiming they can't end no-grounds evictions because it would somehow breach landlords' human rights, especially after the Human Rights Commissioner thoroughly debunked this nonsense in the Commission's submission on the bill and in a statement on the 8th of July 2021. And I'll, I'll table a copy of that statement for the benefit of the House. The Commissioner said, since there is a clear justification for a limitation of rights, given significant housing instability and homelessness in Queensland, it's unlikely that requiring a lesser to provide reasons to end a tenancy at the end of a fixed term would amount to an arbitrary action. The human rights expert and QCOS CEO Amy McVie also called the government's property rights arguments a furphy. She also rightly asked, and I quote, how can a government say that this law will breach or limit human rights in a way that's unacceptable when they are willing to pass laws, pass a law that puts GPS trackers on children and call that compatible with human rights? Now, Labor says that their bill is about modernising our rental laws, but it is still based on the archaic assumption that renting is a short-term fix, a stopgap for young and single people before they buy a home for their family. People increasingly have no choice but to rent for life. My family and I rent our home. It's where my baby daughter took her first steps, where we put a trampoline out in the backyard for the kids, planted a verge garden during the first COVID lockdown. My kids can walk to school from where we live. Now, I'm really lucky to have good landlords and to have been able to put down roots here, because according to this bill, as a renter, I have no right to do so. A renter in Indrapilly emailed me recently saying he and his wife, a critically essential worker in short supply, may be forced to leave Queensland because of a lack of secure housing. He said, because of COVID, my income has been slashed by 70 per cent. Because of age and other factors, this means that my wife and I will probably have to remain renters for the rest of our lives. We have no security outside of your leases that the landlord is under no obligation to renew. Since he can make a lot more money by getting in a fresh tenant than charging anything the market will bear, he has already refused to extend the normal one-year lease. On this bill, that resident put it pretty bluntly when he said, it may appear that there is little difference between a Labor government and a coalition government. Indeed. The minister says they've removed no grounds evictions with this bill, but they've simply given them a new name. In fact, landlords have an expanded suite of reasons to evict tenants. It's been almost charming to hear some other members stand up and reminisce on their days renting during uni or as a stopgap between properties and telling us what wonderful landlords they are. But we're not regulating for good landlords here. And it's also abundantly clear that most do not know what it's like to be a renter right now. They don't understand how hard it can be to find a, rent, a house to rent in your existing community 
or the constant fear described in so many submissions on the bill, like this one. I have had to move three times in the last four years. The stress and anxiety is numbing. Moving, cleaning, packing, while knowing that in 12 months' time I may need to move again is very, very worrying. The uncertainty makes me want to leave all of my belongings in the boxes. What is the point of unpacking? Or the person who said, with the state of renting in Queensland as it currently is, I'm left often homeless, my health disintegrating constantly, in poverty, share housing in often bad situations and unable to start a family as I dream of. I beg, all I want is stability and not to be kicked out of a home I've made without notice or having constantly increasing rent costs. Now this is the other massive hole in this bill. It does nothing to address skyrocketing rents. One of the biggest concerns identified in the government's own Open Doors to Renting Reform consultation report. Now that report said, tenants expressed that they live in a constant state of fear about rent increases, and many expressed the crippling effects of repeated and unsustainable rent increases. Again, without ending no grounds evictions and capping rent increases, renters will continue to be treated like second-class citizens in Queensland. The fundamental power imbalance remains in place and tenants will put off requests for repairs, live in unsafe housing and in constant fear of losing their home, all at the whim of their landlord. But this bill takes all its cues from the REIQ and does nothing to address that fundamental power imbalance between tenants and landlords, ultimately leaving tenants no better off. So it's been no surprise to hear so many members parroting the real estate lobby's talking points during this debate, and one of their favourites being that legislating renters' rights would reduce the supply of rental properties and make housing affordability worse. Now, Despite the REIQ and various other lobbyists repeatedly arguing this, the only evidence they've offered to support it so far is a survey of their own membership in 2019. Not even self-selecting surveys, their own membership. By contrast, during the committee inquiry, Tenants Queensland cited research that shows landlords make decisions based on fiscal and financial policy, with tenancy law having little, if any, impact. What's more, they pointed out that the real estate lobby has argued against any advance in renters' rights since at least the 1980s on the basis that it would shrink the rental housing market. And guess what? It's never happened. What's more, there's a simple intuitive answer to this gripe from REIQ. If strengthening tenants' rights does end up with some property investors selling their properties, these properties don't just disappear. The options are, essentially, that the properties will be bought by another investor who will rent it out or someone looking to live there, someone who will leave their property vacant, their previous property vacant for another renter. I did like the member for Burley's contribution where he neatly summarised the Greens' push for greater investment in public housing investment and a reduced reliance on the private rental sector. Now, Queensland has long relied heavily on the private market to provide housing. And this status quo has left us with 47,000 people on the social housing waiting list and critical levels of household debt. Leaving rental affordability to the whims of the private market has proven to be a catastrophic failure. The myth that private housing supply will fix the affordability crisis is just that. It's a myth. There's been an estimated 164,000 excess dwellings in Australia from 2001 to 2017. Over this same period, the median rent in Queensland rose from $200 to $330 a week. So yes, I would love to see a Queensland where no one has to rely on this broken system anymore, where everyone has access to a well-designed, affordable social home, and where we treat housing like a right, not a commodity, not a source of individual wealth. This is why the Greens will continue calling out this Labor government's public housing sell-offs and their failure to build enough homes for even a fraction of those who need them. Queenslanders are struggling to find safe, affordable housing and it's never been more urgent that the government step in and help them. To do that, as well as building more social housing, we need to genuinely correct the power imbalance between renters and landlords. The Greens introduced a bill to do just that. Our bill would end no ground evictions, cap rent increases, create the right to a pet and allow minor modifications. It would ban rent bidding and invasive application questions. And since Labor won't even debate that bill, we're moving the changes as amendments. And I'll table those in case we don't get to consideration in detail. While the Greens won't oppose the government's bill, we'll not stop fighting for better than the status quo. We will not stop fighting for a Queensland where everyone, regardless of whether you rent or own, has access to a safe, secure and affordable home. 